Okay, so it is 157, which means that we are three minutes away from the new Ubisoft title. Before we see it, I will say, just to be frank with you, from what I have seen, I am not too excited about the game. Solely because it looks incredibly generic, looks like it has nothing new to offer, and it looks very slow. So I'm not too excited about this game. I'm more so watching this hoping that something happens that makes me go, holy shit, I really want to play this game. It looks like it's a, like a combination of every other Ubisoft title, because like here you have Thermite. That looks like smoke with a maid outfit. The other thing that makes me not too excited about this game, just being frank with you guys, is from the rumors, it's called Battle Cat. I'm not one to normally judge a book by its cover, but if you were to tell your friends, hey, you wanna play Battle Cat? They're just gonna assume that you're a fucking furry. Like, that's it. But let's find out, it's reveal time. Tom Clancy is somehow. Three. Two. One. We're excited to share a first look at a project we're developing at Ubisoft San Francisco. Ooh, this is San Francisco. Our take on a multiplayer first person shooter. We need to get you in early and find out what you think. Our goal is to make a best in class shooter for you, the players, to compete and have fun with your friends. It's fast in battle cats. Meets punk rock mosh pit. We're proud to introduce our new game, Tom Clancy's X Defiant. Okay. Your feedback is essential to help us make this game great. Later in this mm. video, we'll tell you how to get involved. But first, we'll get into the action. I'll explain my thoughts a bit after because I don't want to interrupt play, anything they're saying. High octane shooter, combining realistic gunplay with personalized classes. Those classes are represented in our game as factions, each bringing unique gameplay and team dynamics. Wolves Every are the faction tank. comes equipped with traits, abilities, and an ultra to complement your playstyle and the faction's Echelon. role. Used skillfully, each faction Outcast. is capable of swinging the momentum of a match. Our factions are at the heart of the game. They're inspired by Maverick groups from across Tom Clancy's games and beyond. Okay, I'm gonna say it looks like it's just a merger of all the games. Created new characters and gameplay unique to our shooter, and we'll continue to add to this diverse cast as the game evolves. Now, while factions help you define your role, we know to be a great shooter, the gunplay has to be our top priority. We have an ever-growing arsenal of authentic weapons and attachments. We put a lot of care it's Rainbow into Six how guns. our weapons look and feel. Those are like literally all Rainbow Six Every guns. Weapon attachment for Except for one. Satisfying gunplay. I think that's the only gun that's not a Rainbow Six gun. Players can mix and match any faction weapon loadout. You can swap at respawn to adapt to a changing battlefield. Personalize your faction and loadout to be that just seems you. overpowered as shit. A shield that protects you completely and you can shoot out I of. I can't stress this hard enough. We are a shooter first. And your abilities and ultras create unique opportunities to set up nail biting shootouts and unforgettable clutch plays. Personalizing classes, guns, and gear in a fast paced fight is a whole new experience in Tom Clancy Gear. Looks like the shields have a health. We are super stoked by what we've accomplished so far. He seems like it. <laughs> We're proud of our incredible team. We are super stoked. We want to personally thank everyone that's worked so hard during the pandemic to keep the momentum going on this game. Aw, animals. It's been even harder for some of you. We hope that we can build a community that's a place where people can connect and have fun. And we're committed to creating a welcoming game based on fair play and transparency, whether you're playing casually or pushing yourself competitively. Now, the game's still in early development, but we're gearing up to let you in as soon as possible. So register right now to participate in our early rollout phases. Thank you so much for watching. We really want your input, so please reach out to us on social media. A Ubisoft original. Tom Clancy's X Defiant. So my one issue 
y'all you just got the first look at tom clancy's x defiant players anywhere in the no world right it's now, tom clancy's xd com to sign up for a chance to play early and PC XD. players in the U.S. and Canada can start playing as early as August. I'm so quirky. Today. XD. But until then, we got some more details on the game. I'm Not a good by name. Two very special I'm sorry. guests. Kim Wigand, producer on Tom Clancy's X Defiant. Kim, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. And Mark Rubin, executive producer on the game. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. That name's very familiar. So, what else has I he done? I want to get into things. Uh, Mark I want to get into some of the details because this is a new look for Tom Clancy. Can you tell us a little bit more about this direction? Uh, yeah, you know, so we wanted to make a game uh, that had at its core uh, a strong expectation of quality around gameplay. Uh, so, you know, uh, oh, so they just aiming, shooting, etc. What they should have been doing with Siege. Uh, all needed to feel grounded and realistic. Uh, but also okay. smooth and reactive. Uh, and we felt that that matched up really well with the Clancy universe. Uh, but we wanted to bring a very different take on my the webcam. attitude that is, I would say, normally associated with Clancy. Uh, and I, I think you can even see that in our title. I just love you know, Dex, the, bro. The X Defiant logo Looks is cool. really uh, in, a, in a kind of irreverent and rebellious take that we think flips the normally serious Clancy vibe. So tell us a little bit about what kind of game X Defiant is. Okay. At its core, X Defiant is a really fast paced arena shooter with a reasonably fast time to kill. Uh, mm. It should be very it's fast, not fast paced all players of the genre. Fast and time to kill is so right. Can, That's you know, accurate. Jump in quickly uh, alone or with friends. Fast pace is not right. They were walking uh, around like with zombies. A competitive mindset and, uh, you know, really like look how slow that is. That's not fast paced. One of the number one things that I want to fast pace was hyperscape. Uh, that game died. In the game is that uh, we're just here really to make a game that people enjoy playing, and that's it really. That's fair. It's literally that simple. Uh, we want the beginning of this game's life uh, to be very humble and focus on being transparent with our community uh, and have them mm -hmm. be involved. Ubisoft's always been great at transparency. I don't think we want to have any features or parts of the game that we won't talk about with our community. Uh, and there's no, well, maybe the next game will have those improvements as we want this game to last for years. Uh, we are not going to abandon it and go off and make another game after this one launches. Like Hyperscape. Uh, we want to be dedicated to our community. We'll make some mistakes, um, but we hope the community will trust us enough to know that we will always own up to those and we will always work to fix them as fast as possible because again, oh, some things the about day, this we just want to build a game and a community uh that people really want to be a part of oh that's great to hear mark it has me very excited uh I can tell now, i want to get a little bit into gameplay specifically that, that video we just saw kim we got a look at some factions that are coming to the game can you tell us a little bit more about them i can so our factions are our class-based gameplay. And we have four factions that we're showing off currently. The first is the Wolves from Ghost Recon. This is our tank class. The so chat they is have not happy. Higher health than the other factions, and they have abilities that are shield-based. We also have two factions from the division. The first is the Cleaners, our fire-based high DPS assault class. And we have the Outcasts, which is our healing. Uh, faction and finally we have the echelon which is from splinter cell it's our support faction they are all about the closest we'll get to another to splinter cell game giving more information to your teammates now our factions have some key elements uh, they have passive traits they have an ultra and they have the freedom to choose from a number of different abilities that will change the moment to moment gameplay so Clancy on top is rolling of all in this, his grave. Chad is defiance, not happy about which this. Are the characters that you can select within those factions, and every defiant has a set of skins, so you can really customize what your character looks. After like. they're done talking, we'll go full screen on my camera. I'll put the chat on the screen. You guys can tell me what you think. All of that can be adjusted and changed when you respawn in our game, so you are not committed to a loadout as soon as you go into a match. You can change it pretty much every time you respawn. Basically, now this adds a lot of, of depth to our gameplay, uh, but I should mention that gunplay is still the key. That is what will make or break the win or loss for your match. And I think the final note is we're going to continue to add to this roster of factions, defiance, abilities, loadouts. And we really want to hear from you all, the people who are going to play our game, what you want to see. Oh, Kim, that's so great to hear. That's awesome. 
Uh, Mark, I want to ask you now, tell us people. a little bit about the different maps watching. and modes coming to X Defiant. People are dropping, numbers are dropping, uh, yeah. you can't see it. Uh, anything, I but... can give you some details too. Uh, but let me let me first talk about the maps because I love what our team has done. Uh, I really love our maps. Uh, not you know not only do they play really well, uh, but each map is interesting and full of character. Uh, they are all really unique in beautiful locations, and I think this I is an area that. where yeah, our Snowdrop nice. engine really shines. Um, and as we start seeing all of the maps for launch and beyond. Uh, I think you'll see that we're pulling inspiration from many different games, pretty much in the same way we did with our factions. Uh, now for some details, uh, in the upcoming closed test, we're going to have 10 maps available uh, that will be divided into seven standard arena maps and three linear maps. Uh, and then for modes, uh, we'll have three different modes for arena maps. Um, that's domination, ringleader, and upload. And then for the linear maps, we have two modes, uh, Escort and Zone Control. So we wanted our first okay. modes so to like be payload? very familiar to people, but also show that we can play with the formulas. Uh, and so we picked these modes to give players uh, you know, a variety of gameplay styles. Uh, so we have a mode for people who like objectives. We have a mode for people who like a TDM style of play. Uh, we have a yeah. mode for people who want a more competitive, higher risk style of play. That's a lot like uh, hyperscape. As well as the two linear modes worried. for people who like uh, a more progression style of gameplay. Uh, and it's you know it's our hope that at launch there will be a good amount of variety in both maps and modes. Uh, and we plan on bringing new maps and modes on a regular basis throughout the life of the game. That's awesome. You know I love everything I'm hearing. You got. Plenty of diversity in factions, maps, modes, all anchored by good gunplay. That's what I love to hear. Can, can you tell us a little bit about the team that's making the game? Of course. I love talking about our development team. Um, so we are led by the Ubisoft San Francisco studio. Mark and I both work at that studio. And we have a team with just incredibly diverse backgrounds and experiences in game development. Now, okay. we've built this team of industry veterans and we have a lot of experience in making first person shooters. Um, but on top of that, we have a number of production processes that are helping us get this game to a point that we're really proud of. Uh, so we have things like feedback loops and iterations that we do very quickly. We play our game every single day and it is so fun. Um, Unlike and Siege, it's just helping good, us find the fun and point. really emphasize that as we develop this game. Now, I will give a shout out. We have teams all around the world. It's not just Ubisoft San Francisco. We have tons of other studios helping us out. Uh, and a big thank you to them. We could not get this far without you guys. And we uh, love the journey so far. And we're really excited to see where this goes moving forward. So we've worked really hard on this game. We're really proud of it. We think it's really special in the first person shooter genre. And uh, we can't wait to continue building it with you all. Oh, that's awesome. I personally know I can't wait to get my hands on it. And if you can't wait to get your hands on it either, you can head to playxdefined.com and register for a chance you to play XD? early. The first close test takes place August 5th and is open to PC players in the US and Canada. Head there right now. Hey, and that register includes to play. me. Will I do it? No idea. All right, I think that's it for their presentation. What is your level of hype on a scale of one to 10 one being not at all excited 10 being incredibly excited five being you know this looks interesting got a lot of one to threes a few sixes thrown in there some fours and fives i'm just going based off the number i see the most it feels like the average score is around three somewhat like three to five somewhere between there one thing that's good but also kind of sex that I'm a little bit worried about. They mentioned a lot that like all these things that they are dedicated to doing with the game and what they want to do with the game. And basically everything they mentioned are things that are currently big problems with Siege. How they were like, we want to be open and communicate with you. Siege does not have that. They're talking about having like content for like a while and like I guess maintaining that content. Siege doesn't have that anymore. Content's going down. They're like the development team they brought in is like 
diverse and they're all coming from multiple backgrounds of like game development and that they brought it like in all these veterans for fps's which they didn't do for siege i don't want to accuse because you know i shouldn't accuse but it does kind of feel like ubisoft realized what they did wrong with siege and where they're going wrong with siege and are trying to bring out this game to replace it that they're hoping that the Siege audience will move over. They're two different development teams. Like, this is San Francisco, the other one's Montreal. But it feels like they basically took everything that was wrong with Siege and are trying to make it in a new game and make it better. Will it happen? I, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think many people from Siege would come over to this game. One of my biggest issues with it is that they mentioned, and I, I pointed it out while it was happening, they are like, we want this to be fast-paced gameplay, and it didn't look that fast. It looked very slow, which, you know, it could just be the people playing it. Like, remember when we saw the early access of Siege, everyone was super slow and methodical because they just didn't know how to play it. Now it's like fucking left, right, left, right. So bad it messes up my hair. So like maybe it's just the people playing it, maybe they're just slow. Maybe there is capabilities for it to go super fast, but it didn't look like it. That's what I'm a little bit worried about. But that will have to be something that we'll have to see, you know, in person. We can't judge that off the video. Another issue I have is the name X Defiant. It's better than Battle Cat. If they had come out with the game called Battle Cat, I would have immediately written it off. And changing the name helped a little bit. Naming it Tom Clancy's XD is not great. Like, do you guys remember when you guys were 12, someone would say something funny and you just say XD? Yeah. Haven't done that in a while. It's, it makes it seem like a very kid-oriented game. The game seems to be kind of... I don't want to say low effort, because I don't think it is. I think they put a lot of work into this. But it seems low effort in the sense that they're just recycling a bunch of assets. Some people in chat had mentioned that it was literally just a map from Division 2. Or like a street from Division 2. Stuff like that. Like they reused all the guns, they reused factions, they reused basically everything. So I'm a little worried that it's just going to be kind of a generic game. One thing that we would have to be very concerned about. And it's not... Like, again, it's not against Ubisoft or anything like this when I say it. The anti-cheat. The game is free to play, and it's an FPS. Siege struggles so bad with their anti-cheat. Where is X Defiant going to pick up that slack? Like, are they actually going to be better? Is it going to be worse? If, like, it has to be better. If it's even the same as Siege, the game will be dead because of cheaters. And that's just a fact. That's not me trying to be negative or anything. That is a fact. So they'll have to do something. And I don't know what they would have to do. They said that this game is being built from the ground up with all these things in mind. So I assume they would have something good lined up for it. But we'll have to wait and see on that part. Do you guys, in your honest opinion, believe that this is meant to replace Siege? Yes or no? about 50 50. it is different the game is different it's more cod based but how many companies do you know that have two fps's with similar elements competing with one another in the market call of duty only makes one call of duty per year and they don't compete with themselves i guess ea makes battlefield and battlefront but like battlefront is a Star Wars game. It's meant to be for Star Wars fans. Battlefield is different. I guess EA also has Apex. But Apex is a battle royale. It's a different genre. It's an FPS, but it's a battle royale. This is just straight up FPS. Siege is an FPS. Team-based FPS with classes. Because Siege has uh, operators. This has groups that all have different abilities. Like It's, it's too similar. That's what I'm saying. They're just reusing a lot of stuff and overlapping so much that I don't know. I, I feel like it's meant to replace Siege. I don't know. 
I could be wrong. I could be looking at it from more of a negative angle, but it does look like they basically are just trying to make something to replace it. Yeah, so like it, it just worries me because it feels like they basically just took everything from Siege that they could and put it into this new game, and they're talking about how they want to maintain it for a long time. A lot of the issues in Siege they're already trying to address and trying to say we are aware of these types of issues and we want to make sure it does not affect our game, which is good. That's really good for them to say. But it just feels like they're already being like, we know you guys are worried about Siege, so we got this game covered. You see what I mean? One question I have to ask is, if this game, seeing as how the closed beta is going to be in August, if this game is releasing this year, does this compete at all with Call of Duty and Battlefield? This is most similar to those two games, Call of Duty and Battlefield. And those games are both coming out in October and November. I agree with Chad. I really do not think this competes with it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. This could get a small community. It could start growing. Like Siege started the same way. Came out, had a small community, slowly grew over time. It's perfectly possible and it's perfectly fine. But that is pretty hard to compete against. The only appealing aspect is that it's free, I guess. Underdog? Possibly. That's why I'm, I'm not discounting it yet, but it's, it seems to be coming out at like the worst possible time. with a really bad name and a lot of rehashed mechanics that don't make it unique. That's like, those are my three top concerns, I guess. Looking at Ubisoft San Francisco's previous work, this is their first shooter and they're most known for The Crew and Mario plus Rabbids, so I'm not sure how it's going to pan out in regards to development resources and support for other Tom Clancy's games. That I did not know. This is their first FPS. To be fair, I believe Siege was uh, Montreal's first FPS, because all the other uh, Rainbow Six games were third person and they were PvE. Some had some PvP, but most were PvE. Or most people played a PvE. So like that's not necessarily a bad thing. They could make it work for them. Because they're starting fresh. They don't have bad habits. But I don't know. It doesn't have anything special. That's the worst thing about it. Nothing looking at it makes me think, oh, this is unique. During this presentation, and like we'll try to be as positive as we can. During this presentation while watching it. Was there anything that you guys noticed that made you think, oh, that's really cool. Or like, oh, that's interesting, unique. I want to try that. I'm trying to think. The only thing I could think of that that's could maybe be interesting was some of the abilities. But like that has been done in a lot of other games. Like Overwatch is ability-based. Most said no. Idea faction seems all right. Like how Siege aspects are mixed. And most of them looked pretty boring, if I'm being honest. So one was the shield, which is popular in like every single game. You have Apex with, what's his name? Gibbles with his shield. Um, you have Overwatch with Reinhardt. Shields are kind of overdone, so nothing unique there. The healer, kind of generic as well. Overwatch as well has multiple healers. Apex, I believe, has healers. Um, Siege has healers, like nothing really unique there. The flamethrower, I guess that's kind of unique, right? Like, not many games have flamethrowers. What was the other one? Invisibility? That's a pretty common one. Even Halo had that. You pick up the invisibility thing, you just sneak around. This game looks slow, to be honest. It would be better if it had Apex movement mechanics. I don't think Apex movement mechanics are necessary, but yes, I do agree. I think the game looks a lot slower than they're intending for it to be. But again, what trailer have you ever watched where the gameplay actually was resembled accurately? Oh, and in all these trailers, the gameplay is always super slow because they don't want you to miss anything. They take it super slow on purpose. I feel like Yubi's going the wrong direction with FPS. Riot made Valorant, and that game was a huge success because it combines so many favorites in a genre that is ran by CSGO. Not saying they should make a CS-like game, but just something a little more unique. So I think that's what they're trying to do. I think they're seeing something like Call of Duty and Battlefield and being like, this genre is just overran by these two companies. Like, why don't we make something that competes with it? Just like how Riot made Valorant. But one thing that, C or that Ubisoft in general is known for is taking a concept that could probably work and then just adding like one or two things that just makes it 
too different and then not fun. In Hyperscape, it was the abilities and the long time to kill, which is not that common or even present in any other battle royale. I guess Pro League is a thing. Do you guys think that it's genuinely possible to make an FPS or like a shooter type of game or just in general, a multiplayer only game? Do you think it's possible to make a multiplayer only game without naturally having to have a pro league scene anymore? I don't think you really can unless you're Nintendo. And I think even Nintendo has pro league Splatoon. I don't think it's possible to just have a multiplayer game without Pro League. Pro League is just so naturally baked into multiplayer games now. So this game should have a Pro League. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess they'll have to make a Pro League for it. I don't know how that would look, but I am cautiously optimistic of this game. I'll put it that way. Obviously have kind of a sour taste. I guess for this type of stuff, because we, we know Ubisoft's track record. We know that they are not known for doing these types of things well. Maybe they could actually knock this one out of the park. You never know. I am cautiously optimistic. That's the best way to put it.